everyone, it's Joanna from The Long Stitch. In today's video, I'm going to talk about some important cover stitch do's and don'ts. So let's get to it. And my first do's is to always make a sample before you start actually using the cover stitch machine for your garment. Why you mask? Well, it can be quite difficult to actually figure out the best settings for your particular type of fabric, the thickness of the product that you intend to stitch. So that's why it's always so important to experiment with different tension settings, stitch lengths, differential feed, perhaps even adjusting the pressure foot pressure. All this stuff together can help make you the best stitch that you want. So always make a sample before you start sewing your garment. And an important don't is to never tug the fabric when you cover stitch. I know it can be tempting, right? Because we do that sometimes when we, for instance, using a serger and perhaps even the sewing machine, we're quite common to guide the fabric with our hands and you can do that with a cover stitch machine well but you have to be really really gentle so don't tug and why you mask well the most important thing is that it a can result in skip stitches and two it can also result in wonky stitching so don't tug the fabric instead if you have a problem with the feeding check out if the differential feed is perhaps a bit too high experiment with the pressure foot pressure and see if there are some other reasons why your fabric is not feeding properly because the solution is not to tug the fabric. When you find the perfect settings for a particular type of project or fabric write them down because that will save a lot of time because what you will discover with the cover stitch machine if you haven't already is that the settings can be quite different depending on what sort of product you're doing. So for instance if you're doing binding using um, thick layers of fabrics that will probably require slightly different settings than if you're hemming a regular thin jersey fabric so that's why it's really important that if you get nail those settings do document them because that will make the process easier the next time you're doing something similar don't use worn out needles so if you're having problems such as skip stitches it's usually a signal that you might change your needles to a fresh pair so bring out your needle box and do pick a new pair. That can usually solve a lot of those skip stitches problems for sure. So that's definitely my first tip to always make sure that you have a fresh pair of needles when you are experiencing problems. Always start by threading the looper thread before you move on to the needle thread because this will also prevent a lot of problems that are related to faulty threading which is another thing that is quite common when you're having some type of cover stitches. So you start with the looper thread, you thread it all the way, and then you move on to the needle threads. And it depends on the machine, but a lot of them recommend that you start from the left and then you thread through the right. But do check your manual, it kind of can differ between the machines. But make sure that when you're threading the needle threads is that they, the thread doesn't get tangled, because that can definitely mess things up. Don't think that the cover stitch machine is a magic machine that will work straight out of the box without any tamperings with the settings on any type of fabric or product because well it probably won't even if you have bought a fantastic cover stitch machine you will probably still need to experiment a fair bit before you find the right type of settings for the product you chose. Now of course some cover stitch machines will be better than others but definitely don't have too high expectations of how well the cover stitch machine will perform out of the box especially if you're doing something more tricky than just hemming. Don't start out using really tricky fabrics or very complicated projects before you have mastered the basics when it comes to cover stitching. Now this is something I know is super super tempting when you just start out because you have these big visions of the cool stuff that you want to make with the cover stitch machine but trust me getting familiar with the machine first and understanding the basic is really really important for the end result. So start with the basic and then move on to the advanced stuff. Be patient and give yourself the time to learn. As I said, a cover stitch machine is not always automatically creating the most fantastic seams of every type of project. So you need to be patient. And you know, it can actually be quite fun experiment with different stuff. As I said, if you document them, it will be even more helpful and will save you a lot of time when you're moving forward with more complicated projects when it comes to a cover stitch machine. And if you want to learn more about best practices and troubleshooting, I highly recommend you get my book, Master the Cover Stitch Machine. It's available both as a print book as an ebook. Links will, of course, be in the description section. And if you haven't got my book yet, you can also head over to my website for a free troubleshooting guide. It's over at thelastage.com. Link will, of course, be in the description section. And, and in this guide, I show you step by step 
all the common solutions to cover stitch problems. So you can check out and learn more at thelovestitch.com. So I hope you found this guide useful. If you have any more do's and don'ts, please share in the comment section. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for weekly sewing videos. Stitch safe and I'll see you next time.